Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here with, I think, the 15th episode of uh, Lord Percival Stab, the physician. Um, I had to do two recordings of this. Um, nothing in terms of gameplay progress was lost, but I noticed that for a certain period of time at the start, uh, I had a muted broadcast. So uh, my apologies if this sounds a little canned, but I've... I'm tired, and uh, it's um, I've been making some mistakes. So our main goal has been to uh, basically bulk up on some edge uh, artifacts. This is mostly going to be to try and convert some of the renegades. It is becoming apparent to me that we may not get enough stuff to be able to convert everyone, and that means we'll have to find other ways to eliminate people, uh, particularly Connie, whose resentment is uh, sort of getting in the way, and I'm, I'm not at all clear in terms of how I might remove that resentment. So Connie will kind of be the last that we, uh, last hurdle that we, uh, we get over. Now, the other thing that I'm interested in, rather, rather than just getting things like Betty's Blade, the other thing that I would like to pursue is uh, to get some pigments in in the edge style so that I can make a painting and then basically give that painting to uh, bring in another um, another follower as well. But for the time being, we're only going to be getting things from expeditions. Uh, the expeditions are, you know, <laughs> uh, there's something that we have to build one at a time because we are a little concerned about whether or not uh, any of the renegades are going to be taking some of our artifacts out from under us. And we have quite a few summons, so now may be a good time for me to lose the hint. It's going to take 60 seconds for us to uh, to find the next location. Um, it will leave a, a, a lantern influence, and there's two ways that I can get rid of the lantern influence. I can either do a, you know, a recruitment uh, drive and just bring in the influence. I could get the fascination and bring it in there. The important thing to remember is we only have about five more seconds of a season of vision, so now is not the worst time for me to get the uh, to lose the hint. Um, as far as the dream slot is concerned, I don't have quite as much as I would like to do there. I don't have any prisoners, and I have been trying to keep my nose clean as far as notoriety for the next little while is concerned. Uh, once the uh, charm business is done with the notoriety, we might consider some other, uh, other options. But for now, we're really just continuing the same path that we had before of trying to get more edge items. And uh, we do have a lot of books now, so I'm going to be reading those as time goes by. Also, I do need money, so we are going to be going to the Institute quite a bit. Okay, Season of uh, Despair is coming up, so I want to be a little more careful on any dread that I generate. And this is going to be unlucky as far as uh, I'm going to lose quite a bit of time on the Caligene and Precussigant, but, you know, you can't have them forever, so... I'll try and be a little bit better with my talk verb when the, uh, when the, the jobs are done to to leave that aside. All right, the known unknown Tantra. The light of lantern can only ever reveal the space between the forest shadows. So here we have the unmerciful mantra. Mercy, saith the watchman, watchman is found only in shadow. So I think this might be replacing something that we had already used uh, for an upgrade, but that's fine. Um, Let's go on to the Concursum Diaries. I believe we've already translated that. Yep. Uh, the Diaries of an Explorer and Murderer, Lars Westergaard. He's unhelpfully translated them into Frisian for privacy. There are map legends, there are maps of legends, and there are legends of maps. Aspects of the Mansus subsist in all of these in much the same way that you can find water in a swamp and in a cup and in the sky. Okay, so got some health and still swimming in notoriety it looks like Dorothy hasn't really been impressing us with her uh, with her charms I think in this case I am going to allow not allow one to expire but I'm gonna wait the 22 seconds to use the Percussigant and the Caligine and instead I'm just gonna send oops just gonna send uh, Dorothy out on another another mission So we should be fine with losing this uh, consciousness of radiance. There is a light behind the world, a light above the mantis, a light that penetrates both glass and skin. It is present here. And I've done some good. My patients are quieter than when I began. So more funds. We are going to go back to the Institute 
and we have a new location. So we will be checking out Snow's Keeper, a mountain peak temple of ill-omened aspect. Jewel bright fungus slicks grow in the snow. Uh, sorry, glow in the snow. None has come here in a generation, but still something moves within. So clearly what we're going to want, um, we're going to want in this case is forge to get past the mountain, um, uh, the mountain events. Let's see what else we need. We'll brave the mountain snows to reach the temple. If the dead rise against us, we'll suppress them. But there is a malignity here that we must suppress, or it will return home with us. So this this is definitely one where I think winter and heart are going to be a fairly big deal. Uh, one thing I didn't realize when the hint was expiring was that our fleeting reminiscence will help us out with the, uh, the uh, fascination that comes up. So we're sort of double protected. did get some vitality off of the charm work and we do have a season of suspicion coming up so I do need to be quite cautious I think it's likely that we are going to get caught by um, by that particular season but we'll see one of the things I can do as well is uh, occupy the weary detective through other means All right our expedition plans for the next challenge it'll consume funds I could add funds now or I could send another follower so here we've got the high passes. Forge will sustain us, winter will shield us. Bleak and gray-green slopes uh, lift the eye to distant snow edge sky straining peaks. It'll be a devil of a job to find anything there. <clears throat> we've got worms in the world, so lantern or... Oh, I, I was mistaken. Lantern or moth. So in this case, uh, probably the moth crew uh, will help us the most. And the fretful dead. Not all dead rest easy. The one, These ones dislike our intrusion. We can prevail against them with edge, or they may obey one who comes in the name of winter. So I think in this case here, we're just going to add Azim for the um, for the preservation. Uh, I'll add some. I'll have to add at least one uh, one funds. Oh, actually, yeah, no, we'll be fine. So we add. Um, oh no, hang on. Okay, so I have to add Azim. Then I need to add um, fun. Sorry, add Azim. Add a forge follower. Add funds probably a moth follower then and we've already got her edge so we should still be fine but I am leaving myself open to uh, a, a possible upset Wistergren describes a series of expeditions into the Mansus. He focuses on the details of the experience, the colors, the vistas, the textures, rather than the particular, uh, sorry, particularities. He does warn that the Mansus changes each year, although he assures the reader that the doors have been the same. Doors may close, but they never disappear, at least not while there have been mortals in the Mansus. We're like mice. So this is an interesting one, right? Like when you read something like this, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to pay attention here because this tells us a bit about the Mansus. But I think what this particular bit of the book does is it sort of explains why you get different uh, different items from each trip uh, or potentially different items from each trip. Uh, Phineon invocation. The door in the eye navigates. He is not merciful, but first and always he illuminates. So we've actually got a nice little column of um, a nice little column of lantern here. If I was particularly motivated and I, I really wanted to get that last level of lantern lore, I could actually go from the Mansus glimpse all the way up to uh, the final lore. But this would clearly be a, a considerable effort on my part, and there's just simply more stuff for me to be reading right now. So we'll start by translating the Vinzant inscriptions. Again, we got our Frisian from Izim. So Everett Vinzant uh, transcribed these Frisian inscriptions from a cliff in Anatolia, where he famously survived a lightning strike. He died seven years later to the day. His bones, the legend has it, were hot to the touch. Lock the study door, the work begins. This is not the notoriety I would have wanted to picked up. Okay, so let's get rid of the fascination. Just, just take take the things that might cause us some worry off the table as early as we can. I've done some good. All right, we're practical souls. Sorry, we are practical souls, strong in forge. We'll probably be fine. So let's add Velcine to make that closer to certainty. The wolf despair prowls elsewhere. No dread uh, empowers this despair. It's over for now. So uh, 
time the sundial shadow passes, I must have funds to live or I will become ill. So a season of ambitions is coming up. That might be something that we can uh, we can use or that might be something that um, we sort of get caught by. Now, I don't think there's anything that we can do about the notoriety at this point. Um, and I don't think there's a lot of value in trying. So this does leave the uh, talk verb open. I think what I'll start by doing here is we'll have a chat with Leda and we will get the mirror repaired. We can begin to repair this, but it will take at least a bronze spintrea to purchase the necessary materials. And the updated uh, text, our forge skills represent plenty of expertise, we'll almost certainly make it through. Frost guard and shivering, we've made it through the mountains. So I'll add the funds uh, next. I prepared the text for study. Uh, same text er, as before, so uh, long ago the Sisterhood of the Knot uh, recounted the Forge loved the hour called the Sun in Splendor. The Red Grail long anticipated their union, and the Grail Priestess prophesied it. hunters found notoriety, they will try to use it to create or upgrade evidence. If they're meticulous, they'll always succeed. If they're erratic, they're more likely to fail. But they can occasionally create evidence even without notoriety. Okay. Not a whole lot else for me to do at the moment. I'm trying to be a little more relaxed with the dream slot. It's hard, though. I've done some good. My patients are quieter than when I began. There's a dank and clinging smell in the Institute. Sorry, let's just send the money in now. There is a dank and clinging smell to the Institute halls that never quite leaves one. Perhaps it is the paint, perhaps it is the patience, perhaps it is something in the walls. Yeah, let's see what... Uh, I mean, what's interesting to me is those times when I could have actually uh, taken a prisoner. My follower needs a bronze spintrea or better to complete their task. So we'll give them the bronze now. And sure enough, uh, time alone in a quiet room with a living mind. That's all I need. Now, even if I wanted to procure a pl prisoner at this point, uh, it's just simply not not an option. So I'm certain that my adversary has lodged a copy of their notes elsewhere, with their solicitor, with a su their superior, or even with a contact in the press. This is troubling. So what we're going to do with that evidence when we can is uh, turn or get the Caligine on it. Um, So maybe what I should start doing as a precaution is to carry a few more prisoners inside the uh, inside the area. The dead are pale as inverse shadows. They move like cobwebs in a breeze. Almost certainly they can't stand before us. We'll send them mumbling back into the shadows of the wood. And the Vinzant inscriptions? The remainder of the text consists of gloating remarks by the grail priestesses of the shaping that will come, interpolated with warnings and laments from those in the sisterhood who serve the Ringyu and especially the Horned Axe. Nevertheless, an invocation to the forge is included as part of an attempt to urge it onwards. So in this particular case here, um, I don't, uh, so some of the figures here I don't focus as much as with any game, you know, you're, you're going to find your interests where you want. And I think I have been asked this before, um, so I can't recall if it's in this series or not, but the idea of, you know, what are some of my favorite uh, aspects and whatnot and both as a person and in terms of the game overall, I'm very interested in Lantern. I think it's one that definitely reflects a lot of my own uh, personal interests and a lot of my temperament. Um, I do actually also, I'm quite interested in Nock, uh, and that does also extend to the DLC, which I feel perhaps is less appreciated than some of the other uh, DLC for this game, but I, I did rather like personally. Um, I mean, there's all, everything, because in the end, the different aspects all, or the different principles in this world all sort of have a reflection in our own, you know, our own lives. I think they all are interesting in their own way. Uh, but as far as things that I relate to the most, definitely sort of Lantern and Knock. And um, as far as the writing is concerned, though, I've definitely always enjoyed uh, the the heart. It's it's one of the ones that I feel the most in terms of its uh in terms of its its rhythm and its its contents, um, I also think that's intentional. I think in the case of Lantern, um, something I don't know something as as uh, obvious uh, wouldn't be as appropriate as in the case of of Heart. 
But what I meant to, to say by this is that, so if I wanted to kind of focus a little bit more on the Grail, one of the things that I might pay attention to is when they refer to the, the Grail priestesses, you know, shaping, uh, shaping to come, so on and so forth. Um, and laments from those of the sisterhood who serve the ring you and especially the horned axe. So we've got a few different concepts here, right? We've got associations to the grail. We've got um, the sisterhood. Uh, and again, you need to decide what the sisterhood means in relation to grail priestesses, uh, priestesses. And then once you do that, you can make the connection between the sisterhood and the ring you and the horned axe. And at that point, again, if you are interested in terms of uh, principles or, you know, again, it, de it depends in terms of where you want the focus to go. But there are these uh, kind of these points where you can say, OK, you know, I've got a connection made here and there's a really clear link between this concept and you know, this other idea that I was looking for. <clears throat> I don't actually have a whole lot to unpack on these particular ones, but it's an example for me, again, of where these points where I put a little bit of a I put a little bit of a um, a, uh, a kind of a signpost down for myself later and say, I want to make sure that I have a much better idea about the sisterhood of the knot in future so that I can, you know, I can follow these uh, these ideas a little bit later. Okay, we are going to go and try and get some more Forge. So in this case, The Burning Woman, a transcription of a play by Menander, the victor, possibly the dramatist, uh, sorry, a transcription of the play by Menander, the victor, possibly the dramatist of that name, into Frisian with commentaries. Lock the steady door, the work begins, and I don't recall if I added the funds or not. I think I did. The mirror has been repaired. It shines again as it did once before. So I do want to go to the peacock door. Uh, we should probably do that sooner rather than later. I'm not going to destroy the evidence yet. I am, however, going to generate some notoriety by getting a body. So Saliba, would you be so kind? sufficiently persuasive disciple can probably lure a susceptible companion back to us. And you know what? Let's just go to the peacock store right away. We're doing all right in terms of recovering money, so I'm reasonably happy about that. Another season of ambitions coming up. My lover and I contend in the spaces above and beneath the flesh. I must match their intensity. And the light of the mantis dims in me. I am less than I was. I need conversation. I must have those particular conversations. So I think what I'm going to do, especially because we do have fairly high lantern uh, lore, and we are in a situation where we do have not the most powerful, but some reasonably powerful, um, you know, uh, well, let's say we have access to powerful um, lantern, uh, lantern influence and items. Uh, I really should be in a position here where I want to try and, and undertake certain certain rituals. So, uh, expedition plans for the next fun. So I don't think I read the text. Uh, when the dead return to us, they use what matter they can if their bodies uh, if their bodies are gone. Dust, rust, cobwebs, scraps, and tatters. Now that we have broken them, these tatters are all that remain. So we know that we've got the worms in the world uh, approaching us. This is actually a pretty devastating one. So lantern or moth, I believe we're strong in moth, but we don't have any lantern here. So it seems pretty clear to me that we want to add Yzabet or someone equivalent. And same text as before. So the play describes a pilgrimage of smiths and adepts following the trail of the burning woman who has appeared in all their dreams and given each a wound and a word. So of course the wound is particularly interesting given its association with Nock. Uh, Enid prefers to close her eyes rather than look at me. She says it hurts to look. She says it with such longing that I can't take offense. So this will help me. The bittersweet memory I always find is an interesting one. It does give you enough to be able to sort of um, eliminate uh, eliminate the the dread that emerges uh, but this is one of these nice things where you can have sort of component parts uh, it, it, it can be quite useful to be able to draw on uh, to draw on some dread at the right moment so I do actually kind of like having a bittersweet memory around if um, you know if, if the mood is appropriate the season is appropriate maybe is better is what I mean all right so this is maybe not a bad time for me to take note of this stuff. I actually have... Um... Oh, did I really? Okay. I'll use a proper notebook this time. 
So I'm nowhere near uh, where I want to be, but I actually don't remember the level that I require to ascend. So we can get... I believe 15 is the highest that we can get. Um, I have completely forgotten where the lore came from. I'm pretty sure we were still trying the Red Church, so let's go for it. And we did indeed get a Vagabond's map, so... Actually, i maybe make a note there as well. The Vagabond is the one hour who can never enter the Mantis, but she goes everywhere else. And if you believe her boast, she's the only one who knows all the histories. Sometimes she lets someone record her travels. I saw the Red Church again last night, with its pews of bone, the stained glass, and the shades of the... Uh, sorry, in the shades of ruby, the golden altar that beats like a heart. That night, the names of the Grail gathered to speak of the Long, who'd sworn off the pleasures of the bedchamber, save between man and man, or woman and woman. They still pay the tribute of delight, an ivory said. They do not bear fruit, a lovely said. If Forge and Son had only joined, a thirstly lamented. And then they fell to gossiping of the Long in the House of Leith and their deeds in the desert. I remember it still. So if we want, we have enough to upgrade to the Port Noon anecdote, but I don't think I want to uh, leapfrog the, uh, the levels quite yet. We are almost certainly strong enough at Moth to be secure against this curse. Okay, so Spencer Hobson's going to cause us some trouble. Uh, it looks like the Season of Suspicion's also going to be arriving just in time to, uh, for me to get hit by the notoriety, so... The minion is returned, attended by a prisoner, rendered docile with delight, and they brought some money with them, so thank you, hapless prisoner. Uh, let's get... I think it's too late, but let's get Dorothy on the case. Significant conversations in a smoky meeting room. What do I need from my follower? No. Not everyone is sympathetic to our aims, but if we have problems with our reputation, our disciple can probably smooth them over. Our power is stronger than the power that was here. The curse won't touch us. The smiths and adepts give up on finding the burning woman and resolve to build their own kingdom, where our strength will be sufficient to shatter the world. And here we have the formula fissive. So this is a big one for us because it does bring us to a new level of forge. Break a thing and you have fragments. Break those fragments and you have dust. Break the dust and then break what remains. Here is fire. So this is helpful for us. Uh, however, we do have the fascination, which I want to get rid of, and I don't really have access to anything to immediately get rid of the um, to get rid of the uh, the fascination. I don't have a fleeting reminiscence, for instance. So I think what I'm going to do here, um, first of all, I'm going to get some uh, translation in. So the Iron Book, Emmanuel the Ordo Limea, a order of quasi immortals who maintained a secret enclave at the source of the River Limia in the Roman province of Hispania Gallicea. So we will translate the text. Lock the study door. And I think here we'll just go straight for the better sweet memory. An understanding neither uh, sorry, an understanding neither dare speak aloud, a quarrel and its aftermath. And yes, my rival is considering an expedition, so I am fortunate in that I uh, I didn't stack a bunch of material. So this is what I was talking about, right? The bittersweet memory is something that allows me to unpack some dread if I need it. And in this particular case, uh, it helps me eliminate the fascination. I have some spare contentment sitting around, but that's not quite as important right now at the moment. Power is stronger than the uh, power that was here. The curse won't touch us. You know what? I might be lucky enough. So the weary detective... Nope, the weary detective's got 9.5 seconds. So if I started a little earlier, I would have been fine. But let's just take a second here. So I don't think we're quite in the... I don't think we're quite where we want to be as far as... Um, uh, so there, there's a, a more powerful ritual that we can do. Um, I'll just take him, you know, whatever example I want. Uh, oh, nope, it needs me to, it actually needs me to be that highest, 
uh, highest level. So, yeah, I don't think there's, I don't think there's much value in uh, in flogging that anymore. I think I'll just wait till I've got my my levels up. I sadly don't have any heart anymore, but I do have some money, so. The adversary is asking searching questions about my activities. So 27 seconds, if we generate a notoriety, we can scoop it up. But right now the worry is that we've got damning evidence and I need to get rid of it. The altar's garment. The interior of the temple throbs with luminescent fungi. We must peel them from the altar with our gloved hands before we can loot the place. It is cold as rain-chilled flesh. Our gloves are now stained with light. Our breath mists in the temple's cold. And we prepared the iron book for study, so I think we're ready to just uh, move on to it. Actually, so it does uh, pain me a little bit to not be pursuing study as, as actively as I could, but we're not really doing a lot of rituals right now. Oh, incidentally, uh, originally some of my worries here was that I didn't have enough uh, lore to be able to do these commissions. We have long since passed the point where we're not doing commissions because of a lack of access uh, or lack of ability. In this case here, we're doing it because I want to improve my uh, my access to worldly funds. One of the things I was originally doing as well was making it a cleaner division in terms of whether or not I would be able to eliminate notoriety, but it's really clear here that I haven't been eliminating notoriety at a fast enough clip to make it worth um, you know, ignoring the mystique that comes up. So I may want to revise my feelings about that and be a little more active in pursuing uh, pursuing this kind of knowledge. We'll see. But for the time being, I think I am going to study with health, and this is just simply that uh, so I can have a vitality that I can I can get rid of the illness with. It would be nice to keep a, a stack of money. Long walks kill cobwebs. My rival see. Uh, okay. Oh, we're good. And optimism is the spice which saves. All right. Oh, but that, yeah, they didn't pick anything up, so, um, I don't see it hurt. Uh, no, actually, sorry, I was originally going to send Dorothy back, but we're going to take the Caligeen to eliminate the evidence as soon as possible. The air is curdled now. I am home again in this lump in flesh. Better, perhaps. Okay. Uh, as a precaution as well, I'm going to go through the stag door towards the, uh, sorry, not the stag door, the white door, so that I can pursue, uh, favor from authority. So, in my dreams I know the path to the white door through the bounds. That path is thronged with the dead who pass that way. I will need health to resist their chill. Now I can approach the white door through the bounds. Now I can press my fingers to it, feel its chill, watch it swing open. As it opens, my mouth closes, tightens, heals over like a lost deformity. Around and about me is the cobalt light of the mansus. And the tre treasures that unknown priests left here, and a pitiful huddle of bones. A sacrifice? Or did a later visitor end their visit here? The glowing fungus has etched their skeleton with its acids. So, notoriety, which we'll have to deal with. Valsine did good. Good work, Azim. Good work, Persek Kusigant. Good work, Caligine. All right, we've got an enigmatic sculpture, an elabor elaborate ivory sculpture with... Uh, sorry, an elaborate ivory sculpture of impossible intric intric <laughs> intricacy. Around and across its surfaces, Sanskrit inscriptions spiral against matching lines of vac. So, under normal circumstances, this would be, uh, you know, be very helpful. But we've already got our vac, so this is going to be something that becomes like the jumble, uh, just an opportunity for us to make a little bit of money. We have the dream of the conspiracy of the lower skies. We'll read the text when I'm uh, when I'm about to. Uh, but we'll read the the text when um, when I can. I guess where is she gone would be better as a little bit closer to the front. Hallowed Polos, uh, ring crown of uh, sorry, the ring crown of a savage mother, stained with essence, woven with scraps of hair, and blessed with flecks of skin. So this is the sort of thing that we could use to recruit a renegade into uh, into Grail, but we don't really we don't have any. Uh, we don't have it anymore, so... Now, this is a big one for me, so... Furious Sliver. When the Lionsmith turned against the Colonel, he crushed his own sword with his fist. 
Each tiniest fragment of that weapon still thrills with rage. So, this now gives me a reason to give up Betty's blade. The meteoric bullet won't be helpful to me for the, um, for the purposes of recruitment. We can start bringing people in. So I guess the question is, who do we want to bring in? Do we want to bring in Douglas, Natalia, Zachary, or Spencer? Um, I've, I've got a fondness for two in particular in terms of what I have available. But let's think, uh, let's think a little more closely about what I want to be accomplishing for the next, uh, the next few minutes. So we don't have a season of ambitions coming up right now. That may change, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm running ahead with the, the assumption that we're not going to have to encounter that. So let's start with, let me just make sure, yeah, this is the Rending Mountains, so we'll take an unresolved ambiguity and we will load up our next expedition. The Rending Mountains, it has been said, tear the flesh of history. It is generally only be said by people like Christopher Elopoli, but still, they are a good region to find the places that daylight history does not recognize. Now next up, we're going to talk to the Caligene, and this is just so that we can destroy the evidence. So not everything from the Mansus can speak, but everything can understand mortal speech, even once it has passed the White Door. And the question now is, do I want to try this with the Percussigant or do I want to try this with Azim? I'm actually going to send Azim uh, here first, and this is because in six seconds I'm going to be able to try and resummon the Percussigant. Alright, so we're also in double digits for fun, so I can afford to slip away for a little bit. We have next season of suspicion okay so it's very important that i either get that favor from authority or that i eliminate the evidence either one works for me so uh moving on let's do i suppose i have to do the right of the beast division here so um, actually i think we're just adding knock should be sufficient so the percussigan merciless and merry heart will bring it forge will constrain it If this ever reaches trial, I will be in serious danger. Even if this hunter is disposed of, another one may find their notes. So, we're gonna hang on to the damning evidence for a little bit. I want to just kind of preserve Azim for as long as I possibly can. But I do need to keep an eye on the... Well, I guess this is the dial I need to keep an eye on, because either the damning evidence is going to be taken by the Caligean or it isn't. I've neglected my studies, but I stand a little straighter. So we're good for vitality for the season of sickness. Uh, we are going to need to um, we are going to need to make sure the dream slot is available, and that may not be an option for us right away. But let's move ahead, assuming that uh, that we're you know we're good on that front. So we've got the Iron Book, the man sorry, a manual of the Order uh, Limea, an order of quasi immortals who maintained a secret enclave at the source of the River Limia in the Roman province of Hispania Gallicea. This manual was compiled by one Milari Yivni, who claims to have traveled to join the Ordo from the Crossroads of the Water. Sorry, Crossroads of the Waters. Members of the Ordo took an oath, the iron chain, that required them to remain hidden from the world. This manual includes presumably long obsolete addresses and passphrases that could be used to find the Ordo's contact in the town of Iria. Again, just preserving the life of Azim for as long as I can get away with it. And regardless of what happens, we're always going to go to the Lodge of the Sage Knight to try and get the favor from authority. So, erudition. Last night in the dream, I was in the Lodge of the Sage Knight behind the white door. It is difficult to remember exactly how I came there, and the mistress of the place, the woman with the dark glasses, was nodding as if I'd asked her a difficult question. Of course I hadn't. I lost my speech when I passed the white door. How is it that I can speak? She said to me. I didn't come here through the white door. I'm not proud of what I did to come here, so let me tell you about something else. Okay, so I have a bit of a decision to make. Um, if I think I can get past... So if I think the damning evidence is... Now, you know what? We're going to go back to the white door. That's my insurance policy. My 
The scheme will most likely succeed. There is always a chance that something will go awry. Let's place merits closer investigation. So we've got Hunter's Pits. I should base... This is actually a big one for me. Uh, this sounds like something that's going to be very edge-oriented. The Tearing Tribes enlarged this cave system, digging shafts, preparing traps. It may have been a piece of execution or... I'm sorry, a place of execution or a proving ground. In either case, it's sacred, and the tribes don't want us there. If we survive them, there is still one more terror in the cramped tunnels. Uh, let's wait the six seconds. We, I think we can afford that to get the percussant back. I wait word. Yeah, so if, if this fails, we're in trouble. This illness has damaged my health. I'll need to rest before I'm fully recovered. Put the affliction and the vitality down just so we're sure about what we need to do. First the thump, the thump, the rattle and cry of the ceremonies it attends in the woods. Now here it is, shouldering its way through the world's skin like a clawed and ruthless uncle or a headless flapping bear. So in this case here, we're not going to worry about the Caligine for now. Well, actually, if it's 2.8 seconds. Yeah, let's see what happens. Um... Sorry, I need a minute to think my way through this. I'm not going to go to work. I'm actually going to start the expedition now. We'll add Azim and the Pregusigant. The Trap Labyrinths of the Ta uh, Sorry, of the Tearing Tribe. Sorry, the Trap Labyrinths of the Tearing Tribes. We'll have to scale the mountains and battle our way through the tribes. After that, no doubt, there will be something else. Okay, so it is going to want a uh, Forger Winter from us. You know what? Let's run with it anyway. It's a little dangerous, but... All right, my minion is returned. The evidence has been destroyed. I am a little safer. So in this case, I'm going to get the resummoning out of the way, which means that I'm going to need to find another way to get around the mountains because the Right of the Beast division is going to take a while. So... Formula Ophidian, and I believe we need some winter stuff. Oh, that's right. Um, what influence am I going to use? I may not be allowed to be that clever. Well, I think I messed this up. So I'm not ready to sacrifice lore quite yet. Right of the Crucible Soul might work, though. Yes, an invocation and an instrument. So there's our knock, and we can add the winter here. Forge for the Smoky Spirit summoning winter for its binding. It must know who will rule it. So, um, High Edge is definitely going to help us here. So we've got the Watchers and we've got the Younger Sisters. So it really is just the High Passes that are, um, you know, that are something that we need to, to worry about. So, I mean, at this point here, um, we don't have either Forge or Winter. I might as well add uh, Violet and Eau Claire. I could also add the two Forge followers. I do have more of them, but I don't know. We'll... We'll work with uh, the power of winter for now. The final part of the manual describes the punishments for Ordo members who break the Oath of Secrecy. This includes an invocation used to summon the spirit called King Crucible as an agent of vengeance. Yivni cautions that this must be the, a last resort when the Oathbreaker would otherwise go unpunished. Summoning King Crucible might draw the personal attention of the Forge of Days. So here we've got the Caladate uh, invocation. And then we can move on to... The Book of Thrones. So I don't think we need the study verb for the next little while, so we'll use our Frisian again. 
Legend of the Shadowless Empire, transcribed by Alexander Peter Hans from the Annals of the Secret Sh of a Seek sorry, the Annals at a Secret Shine in Anatolia. Lock the study door, the work begins. Considering the evidence. Uh, we're safe from a season of vision, so we're we'll be fine there. And back to the Lodge of the Sage Knight, we do get the favor from authority, so we would have been protected twice over. I've learned something that will earn me a favor once only. Last night, I dreamt of a blue silk pavilion overlooking the cloudy labyrinth of the Bounds. I listened to the mistress of this place speak of other visitors. The Suppression Bureau come here. Did you know that? I think they hope to recruit me as an ally. She snorts derisively. After what they tried to do to Christopher, but their folly is your fortune. I will tell you something that may help you if the Bureau ever troubles you. So, good news for us here. Um, this does also mean that we are, like, we're in a better place overall for a lot of our, um, a lot of our, our um, sort of milestones and whatnot. So, let's start by clearing out the aff uh, affliction. I do know that I'm going to need to deal, well, sorry, I actually don't know that. I will likely need to deal with some evidence soon. Um, and we do have the creature of smoky deception. You know what? The more I think about it actually going to take Violet out. The thing that would be better for me to do is to, in fact, bring my Forge followers. And this is for the simple reason that um, if I get the Caligene in time, I can actually add it to the expedition. And I prefer, I prefer that option. Also, again, I have more more forge followers so if I lose one it's not the end of the world at least not until I complete the ritual uh, the sundial shadow passes we've got a season of despair coming up explorers row we're practical souls strong in forge we'll probably be fine not all the forge's creatures are bright its offcuts and its bastards gather in the bounds like hammer scale in the cracks of a smithy floor here comes one now. So we'll wait it out a little bit. We'll add the Caligene for now, but if there's evidence to be removed, we'll work on that. And let's get our funds up to double digits before we start thinking of using that work verb for something else. All right, I am certain that my adversary has lodged a copy of their notes elsewhere, with their solicitor, with their superior, or even with a contact in the press. This is troubling. So I think I'm going to change my... I'm going to change my plans again. We will send the Caligean out to deal with the evidence right away. We will take Tristan to add them to... Sorry, Tristan to add uh, to the, um, the Mountaineer's Road. Our forge skills represent plenty of expertise. We'll almost certainly make it through. And if I happen to need some vitality, I've got that too. Frostguard and Shivering, we've made it through the mountains. So any time that I add the Caligene at this point is just simply going to be to... Um, it's going to be to preserve it. So I've prepared the text for study. Now, there is a question as to whether or not I want to be messing around with something... Uh, so these are all fairly high level, and we do have not just a Season of Fascination up, but a Season of Dread coming up. So in this case, I'm going to punt and just simply translate a lot of these works. And then when we're a little bit less fragile as far as our emotions are concerned, then we'll be able to read these in, uh, in fairly quick succession. So where is she gone? A discussion in VAC of the Vagabond's travels. Lock the study door. The work begins. even more heart. <laughs> Alright. Sick room grows close and stale. It's time to get up. So, what do I want to do with Dream? We've already got our favor from authority, so really it's just a question of repairing the Wildering Mirror. Now, um, except for adding some funds, there's not a whole lot that I need to worry about on this expedition anymore. Uh, another season of Visions coming up. So I suppose I need to be on my best behavior. I wait word. Now 
we can add the money now, I suppose. My own heart pumps more strongly today. The minion is returned. The evidence has been destroyed. I am a little safer. So, of course, this is a higher priority for removal. Now, we don't really have anything that's threatening us at the time. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to send Saliba out to procure another, um, another potential sacrifice. So if this gets ready to expire, one of the reasons why I feel okay keeping some prisoners around is if they are too close to expiring, I'm just going to be able to use them in the spider's door. Come closer, dear ones. We have something special for you. Oh, so it was Grail. Uh, good work there, um, Azim. I've prepared the text for study. So I, I'll read this when I'm, uh, when I'm actually, I'll read this when I'm ready to actually study it. So the Silver Book, a man manual of the Ordo Limea, an order of quasi-immortals who maintained a secret enclave at the source of the River Limia in the Roman province of Hispania Gallicea. This is another one of these examples where... So we've had... I think we've encountered a few of these in the playthrough already, but there's a number of different medals uh, referred to in these different books. So another sort of lore, lore project I'd like to get on is actually to compare the the different books in this series to see if there's any contrasts or um you know or just generally other observations for me to um to pick up on so a reason will be protected from any uh, season of visions problems wow they're really jumping between between the two in this case here, the Season of Visions has uh, generally has less teeth than the Season of Despair, and this is because we're generating a bunch of fleeting reminiscence. So, uh, again, this is more so in the new version of the game as opposed to how it was originally released, but now that a fleeting reminiscence will uh, be used to tranquilize fascination, the, if you wind up in this cycle of Season of Despair, Season of Visions, Season of Despair, Season of Visions actually becomes quite a bit more blunted just because you have this long string of fleeting reminiscences that you can use to tranquilize the fascination. Um, Season of Despair, on the other hand, you, you're in a bit more trouble. Uh, for that, you need contentment, and it's only a Season of Ardors which is going to generate contentment on its own. You either need to dream or, or do other activities to, to get your contentment. I am still going to work at the Institute again. I want those funds to be at a... Uh, above cleanly above 10 that's just an arbitrary number it's there's no major gameplay reason for it but um, we are in a nice spot where i can you know generate notoriety and get the uh get the heart followers to clear it all out their present pleasures will end ill for them perhaps they'll think it worth it perhaps, uh, meanwhile we can pass expedition continues so we've already spent our money uh, in this case here we're just going to eliminate the um the serpent and we should be good to go. I prepared the text for study. Uh, right, I think I said we were going to read these as I um, as I actually touched them. So, Encircling Tantra, the explorer and entrepreneur T. Everett du uh, Duplantis once attempted to plunder this temple uh, uh, sorry, the tumble once attempted to plunder the temple where this text was held. His fate is recorded in an appendix. So we're probably going to wind up having to sacrifice the prisoner, but that's not the end of the world. And my minion is returned, uh, attended by a prisoner, rendered docile with delight. So again, some more money, which is nice. And I will now take advantage of my heart followers to clean, kind of launder my reputation. So not everyone is sympathetic to our aims, but we, uh, if we have problems with our reputation, our disciple can probably smooth them over. Okay, so free turn coming up. Eyes like gas lamps, scales like black jade. A serpent is a powerful foe, but it's nothing before us. One more trip to the Institute, and then I think I'm going to start doing commissions. Well, I suppose it depends on how the charm offensive goes, but... And I think we're safe enough now to start reading things like uh, The Book of Thrones and Where Is She Gone. I'd fear Where Is She Gone a little bit more than anything else, but at this point here, it doesn't hurt to be a little more cautious. 
The serpent rolls and roars, its death throes shake the earth, but it's dying and we will pass. So I think this should be a bit of a bonanza for us, uh, edge-wise, but we'll see. All right, the Book of Thrones. Uh, same text as we read before. In the first and greatest history, a subject of the Shadowless Empire of Persia travels to the west, to the kingdom of the Persids. Uh, there he becomes a protege of the tutelary Persid deity, the Scarred Man, who lives in the dark. Um, this, by the way, I'm assuming is a reference. I'm pretty sure it's the colonel who's uh, scarred, uh, who lives in the dark. He returns after seven years to put his skill, uh, to put his skills at the service of the Shadowless Empire. Yeah, put his skills at the service of the Shadowless Empire, becoming their golden general. And of course, generalship you would associate with Edge. Season of Cool. So that's pocket contentment with uh, Enid, potentially. And treasures are coming up soon, so that makes me happy. All right, I did say we're going to see what happened with the reputation, and we are getting near the end, so I think uh, raising some money from the Institute isn't a terrible idea right now. It does mean that I delay commissions uh, even further, but we're still doing okay for Bronze Ventrea. The things that we would normally need um, are not, uh, not quite as critical. And in this case, we did find that um, the timing can actually work rather well, uh, sending a, a heart follower here. So I'm going to preemptively pick up the, the influence, or the notoriety. The memory of war. In the crumbling depths of the hunter's pits, we found a room where battle scenes are painted on the walls. Here are the shrines of all the greatest hunters of the tearing tribes. And in the Book of Thrones, after many years of peace, the heirs of the Persids move against the King of Kings and the Shadowless Empire. The Golden General will not take arms against the blood of his mentor until the King of Kings whispers a great secret of betrayal in his ear. He breaks his sword, forswears his oath to both the Empire and the Scarred Man, and enters the temple behind the world, leaving his life behind. Actually, is this a story of... This could be the story of the Lionsmith. Oh, no, no, the, definitely if that's the Lionsmith. I'm almost certain this is the story of uh, the Lionsmith. Um, the Lionsmith is young by the standards of the hours, but old by the standards of war. His names are recent recruits, and their recitation has a savage power. Uh, we've got an unresolved ambiguity. I clearly was out to lunch in terms of the details of this. Like, I, I'm saying, oh, hey, I wonder if this is the story about the Lionsmith, at which point it basically uh, says it outright. So... What can I say? I'm, I'm not... Uh, there, there are definitely more better experts here. All right, where is she gone? The Spieth, perhaps a single adept, perhaps a council of scholars, hypothesizes secret events from limited evidence with persuasive accuracy. The Vagabond is recorded to have traveled not only in the Mansus in the wood, not only all nine continents, uh, but also places forbidden to other hours. By the way, um, obviously the number of co uh, continents referred to here does not follow geography as we understand it. Uh, but if you include secret histories, there are nine different principles. And so I am curious if there is an association with these continents and principles, or if that just happens to be a, um, a, uh, a coincidence. The memory of war. These are, uh, these are the trophies the hunters won. Not all the beasts they slew are beasts that walk the earth today. So we have the Caligine, we've got some notoriety which could be picked up in 19 seconds. Thank you Tristan, thank you Laidlaw, thank you Percussigan, thank you Azim, we're probably going to lose Azim. Alright, we've got the August Stone, a tremendous bowl, big as a gong, carved from black basalt, with matching incantations in Aramaic and Mandiac. So this, again, under normal circumstances would be something we're pretty happy to get, but we already have Aramaic, so we can sell that. Scaptodon Fang. Okay, so the Scaptodon Fangs almost certainly will not uh, serve for bringing people into the cult, which is a little bit of a shame because there's so many of them. But uh, I'll, I'll move forward uh, assuming that I can't use them. Malleus Imperative. A tiny ear bone blackened by intense heat. Applied correctly, it can crack stone. Bitter Black Salt. So if I want to do a forge painting, I've got a few of those. Another Scaptodon Fang. 
The Book of Dissolution. Alexander Probst, following the foundational work of Hosti Moore, recovered a copy of this work from a mountain temple in Persia. Other copies surface now and then, usually seared on rock. So uh, normally, uh, like I had uh, Forge up quite a bit earlier, but in this case, Forge is really no different than Winter Grail or Knock at this point. So we'll just add it to the, the back of the queue at this point. And yet another scap to Don Fang. Okay, so I for some reason thought I would get an edge pigment out of that, but it seems that I got a bit unlucky. But I can give up Betty's Blade, uh, but of course this is only after the uh, talk verb has been, been addressed. I don't think I have... Yeah, I don't have any um, vitality to work with. So we can start on the next exploration... Sorry, the next exploration right away. Um, Azim, we're going to lose. Nothing we can really do about that. And I think I'm getting to a point where I need to make a decision with this hapless prisoner. Uh, in 55 seconds... Well, even if there was a season of... Um, ambitions that came up we're clearly not going to be able to use them so we will go back to the spider's door in my dreams i know the path through the silken stands to the spider's door if i slake its thirst by spilling fresh blood before i sleep it will open for me the spider's door is always thirsty always the blood i have given leaks in threads and spills through the skin of the world and the door drinks it and a moment satisfaction swells its opening until i can pass so reason for enid I've done some good. My patients are quieter than when I began. So we can't resummon Azim. Um, we're getting close to picking up the notoriety, so assuming that we do, I'm going to start working on those commissions again. But I do want that uh, notoriety be, to be picked up first. Enid prefers to close her eyes rather than look at me. She says it hurts to look. She says it with such longing that I can't take offense. All right, Azim is sulking. From our gossip and invisible lore, Speeth deduces that the Vagabond has visited nowhere, but that she will not return. He also asserts that she has yet to visit the glory, but that inevitably this must be her goal. So another Vagabond's map. I'm actually pretty happy to get that. And I think as a precautionary measure, again, it's a little painful to do given the number of books that we have, but I am going to use um, my... So I just wanted to double check that I really don't have that vitality. Looks like I don't. Uh, so we are going to spend 60 seconds to um, get the vitality just because I'd like to save my, my money. If I am going to be doing some commissions, I should probably make sure that I, I'm able to support the, the expeditions. Optimism is the spice which saves. So we're in good shape as far as the um, as far as our reputation is concerned. So the first thing we're going to do is try and bring a um, try and bring one of the renegades into the cult. So we'll take the Church of the Bright Edge. We'll take uh, Spencer Hobson. So this one might join me if I can mas uh, master the aspect of our cult to the twenty first degree. You can recruit a troublemaker, even one of a different persuasion, if you can provide enough power. But you must include at least one tool as a gift to the independent. So here we will take the Mysteries of Force. So that brings us up to 14. And so essentially here, the question is whether or not we can get um, seven edge worth in a tool. So what I would normally like to do is something like this, but they're not going to accept the Scaptodon Fang. Uh, I don't want to give up the Furious Sliver because that's more than what I need. Um, and the Meteoric Bullet, just we're still short. But if I give up Betty's Blade because I don't uh, have need of it anymore, we can say, this one is ready to join me if I give up a tool as a mark of my respect. You must include one tool which will be permanently lost. This, of course, will also mean that there's fewer opportunities for ah, good timing on the season of ambitions. This will mean that there's one less person to sort of pull that uh, away from me. Okay, so if I would like to, you know, this I could 
for instance, used to summon Azim. Um, but it seems here that the spider door doesn't really give a whole lot as far as the as far as the um, secret histories anyway. So I personally think the Mallory is usually the best option. Um, the Chamber of Ways seems to have some negatives. Uh, and the fact that you can get physical stuff out of the Mallory's makes it a little bit more appealing to me. So here we've got an incandescence, 15, uh, 15 forge. Change follows fire. Last night in the Mansus, I visited the Mallory, from whose engines and avenues one does not emerge unchanged. I watched the processions of sunset, and I entered the amber joy, and the white joy, and the blue joy, and I was subjected to the enlightenments of calcination, and the forge of days touched me with her burnished fingers as I rise from my bed with the utter knowledge that all nights, all nights, all nights must end. I think I said this last time, but I think the three, the repetition three times is a reference to the divided sun, but... Um, this place merits closer investigation. We've got the Eye of uh, Ikermawi. Iker we have read of a sultan who, 800 years ago, would sleep only beneath the stars. He ordered the construction of this observatory so that the stars could be accurately depicted on a ceiling of his bedchamber. Regrettably, the stars they saw were not safe for the unprotected human mind. The sultan's successor ordered the observatory sealed. We will start the expedition here. I do need to wrap up for tonight, but in this case it seems to make as much sense to protect the Caligene and the Percussigant and get on our way. The rending mountains stand between us and the observatory. The door will be sealed and barred against us. The visions we find may tear our sen at our senses. So forge is probably going to be a, a, a primary trait here, but I can't recall the visions. This might be something as easy as lantern, but we will uh, find out later. So we're not ready to go to the peacock store yet. I need to repair the mirror. Uh, at the moment here, I am doing the recruitment. Let's finish that in 20 seconds, actually. Um, following that, I think we should repair the mirror so that we can um, we can head back to the peacock door. I've done some good. My patients are quieter than when I began. So we're above the ten, fairly comfortably above the ten. So I will start doing commissions. This one may be useful for a commission. Prepared a knife for this moment. So Spencer, a disciple. Spencer carries a tiny icon of Saint Agnes on a chain around his neck uh, to rest on the sorry to rest on the scar above his heart. So we've got our third knock follower now. This will be a fun one um, for those of you who like these kinds of guessing games. Uh, I have a pretty clear idea of who I would like to. Uh, who I would like to recruit next. Um, so there's like no prize or anything like that other than bragging rights, but uh, I don't know. I, if you don't want to make it a guessing game, I would definitely be interested in hearing uh, who you would like to recruit in this sort of a situation. You are allowed to say Connie. Uh, Connie is a, a fine candidate, although we know that, um, you know, I'm, I'm fairly certain even if I were to offer the most powerful um, artifact, the answer is still no. Yeah. But that is something that we will deal with at another time. As always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have been enjoying this series or you enjoyed this video and are not subscribed yet, uh, please consider doing so. If you would like to be informed with these about when these videos come online, there is a little bell beside it. And of course, uh, if you comment or if you like or otherwise uh, engage with the videos, it does help me get noticed. And um, it is I have been delighted by not just the growth that this has brought in, uh, but it is really nice to be able to interact with all of you. So thank you very much for doing that. It's actually, um, it has been a, a nice little treat over the the Christmas holidays. Um, I've noticed uh, you've all been very regular in terms of your comments. And uh, I don't know, especially because I, I don't have a lot of people around the, the holidays. Uh, it's sort of been nice to interact with this, this virtual audience. So um, I don't comment on a lot of YouTube videos. I completely understand when people don't because it's not something I do myself. Uh, but just know it's actually something that made uh, made the season a little a little warmer for me. And so I hope you've all uh, been able to spend it with people you care about. If not, uh, you know you can at least rely on these videos. And uh, if this one's coming out on Wednesday like I think it is, I believe the next one should be Friday, uh, where we'll be closing out to the new year with a brand new recruit in the form of Spencer Hobson. 
So until then, have a good night.